Hello and uh, welcome to our today's uh, webinar. ALM tool integration with uh, Argosynth Symphony. Um, my name is uh, Ralf Klimke and I'm responsible for sales and marketing at uh, Argosynth. And uh, we have also in the call or in the meeting, uh, Christian Middle, who is responsible for product development and, and services. And um, yeah, let's have a look at the agenda for today, what we have, uh, what we have prepared. First of all, we want to share a few words about ArgoSense and our, our solutions we, we are offering. And um, after a small set of slides, um, then um, Kristen will, uh, will take over and uh, we'll uh, show you a live demonstration of a combination of Atlassian Jira and uh, Microsoft Azure DevOps, where we will show integration um, based on Argos and Symfony. And after that, we can have um, we can have a question and answer session. So a few words about Argosense. So we have founded a company in 2009 and uh, specialized by the way in um, the area of tool integration and external data exchange. Um, 2013, we decided that we should not have a single product strategy. So um, out of the experience with all our integration projects we have made, um, so we, we had, uh, the, uh, the impression that there's still some, some good product in the area of requirements management and traceability needed. So that was the reason that we created a product in that area as well. And uh, what also is uh, speaking for, for Argosense is that all our employees, usually they have a very, very strong expertise with all the leading ALM tools. So on the one hand side, that has led us to the decision with the requirements management tool. On the other hand side, that's very good, I would say, asset for our customers. So uh, when we are helping them integrating the different tools so that we in our employees not only know how to use the tools, but also know a lot of the background of the tools and uh, where the weaknesses and the strengths are so that we really know uh, how far we can go in terms of uh, integration. Our product development is very, very strongly focused on um, our customers' responses. So that means um, most of the new product functionality really comes from, from customer requests, uh, enhancement requests and so on. So I would say it's up to 80, 90% of what the product um, the, the products um, are about is, is really customer response. So this is what we are really dedicated for. And last but not least, our solutions are really completely used in, um, in all uh, possible industries where some kind of software development, of course, is, is happening. So um, you can see on this slide, um, subset of our customers, mainly the ones with the biggest, or, well, most known brands here. Um, and it's very interesting that most of our customers, they are really willing to talk to new customers or prospects. So is there, if there is a need for you to talk to one of them, share experience, um, just ask us and we will we'll, um, bring you together here. So what does ArgoSense especially has to offer? Just uh, talked about that. So on the one hand side, we have the product we are talking about today, ArgoSense Symphony, and um, especially in the area of ALM tool integration, we want to be more specific today, um, automated Business-to-business -business data exchange is also one topic which our platform uh, comes into play. Um, this is uh, something we had a webinar two days ago. So if there is um, interest for you, if you want to have a look at that, um, we have on our website the recorded webinar um, that you can review at any time. And here we have our uh, platform for requirements management and traceability. So this is also a very good on our combination with our um, integration platform. So the platform itself is completely working in the background. Um, it's responsible for 
let's say, um, managing traces between tools and get everything synchronized right away. And with, Simf uh, with Fidelia, you can, you can make that information also visible in a, let's say, third uh, party um, browser-based interface, so to say. So here you can independently from the, from the systems you are using, exactly see an, uh, information about the um, traceability as well. So let's go back to tool integration. Um, here, uh, what you see here behind these, we call it domains like requirements management, defect test management, and so on and so on are the different tools behind, like an IBM Rational Doors or uh, Microfocus uh, Quality Center. And uh, this picture simply shall show that all the tools can be connected with each other. So all the tools have the chance really to, to talk to um, with each other. Um, it's connected like kind of a bus system, so to say. And uh, all the different tool integrations, uh, let's say for maybe DARS and Quality Center, they can be customized completely um, to your to your needs. Maybe you have a an, uh, an department which is using the same tools like another department, but they have maybe a kind of different approach, how they want to integrate and share data with each other. Of course, this is something uh, that can be achieved with our platform. So our customers mainly are um, using a kind of best of breed support, like I mentioned before, maybe they are cherry picking um, the best tools in each of the domains, uh, which are the best fit in their environment. Um, but at the same time, we also have customers uh, which are using these large ALM platforms like PDC Integrity or Polarion ALM or whatever. But anyway, there's still the need of integrating other third-party applications um, because they're maybe not integrated um, or not, not, not really available within the platform. Or maybe customer says, ah, the requirements portion of PDC, I don't like that so much. We rather would like to use another requirements management system and connect the rest of the platform with that. So everything is possible here. And just go back to to go back to the data exchange portion. Just one slide here. Um, this is basically the same principle. So the different tools uh, we can internally connect, but also can connect them externally. With, um, we we call that um, um, partner portals or supplier portals, um, mainly the automotive industry, where the where the large um, car manufacturers offer such kind of portals. Tools, um, which are online available and where where we can connect directly with Symfony to retrieve data and uh, import that into the internal systems of the suppliers and of course um, transfer back information to uh, to the OEM system so to say and all completed uh, all in a complete automated way here so this is uh, how the platform is also used from an architecture perspective, um, it looks a little bit like that. So that means uh, you can see all the different tools here, which are um, along on that orange line. Um, and so that means that for each of these tools, we have so-called adapter. And these adapters are more or less normalizing the data formats and the syntax of the, the respective tool API within our platform so that we are internally able to talk with a with a one single kind of language to bring all these different tools together and to exchange data between them. Um, so this adapter technology um, brings us in the position that you as a customer are more or less completely independent from, from the tools you are using. So you can upgrade the tools at any time. Uh, so there is no dependency on which version of doors I have to upgrade so that I can integrate with uh, a certain version of HP quality uh, of Microfocus Quality Center. So all that is completely relieved. Um, we usually update our adapters that they are always working with the latest uh, and also older versions of the tool applications so that you really can have a mix and update at any time here. 
And um, at the same time, I already talked about kind of integration scenarios. So we have a lot of customers where they have different integration scenarios or synchronization scenarios, even if they're using the same, same products internally. Um, this can be configured um, using, using our <coughs> different um, um, graphical modules here for configuration, like mapping module or the configuration module. And last but not least, um, we have not only the possibility um, to integrate tools where we have adapters for commercial available tools, like you can see here on that, um, on, on that list here, but also our customers can have integrated self-developed or tools or tools which are maybe not that common on the market or where we do not have an adapter for. So we are opening our um, own adapter development environment to our customers. We call it adapter framework. And you as a customer can use that and build adapters based on the Augustine's technology to have just one integration technology for all your integration needs, even if you integrate uh, self-developed tools. So from the process perspective, just go back one slide again to so what you see here with these process templates. Um, this is behind that we, um, we hide, so to say, these kind of integration scenarios. So that means the, the business rules and the dependencies and the workflows which are relevant for a certain integration scenario is, is built as kind of a, we call it process, integration process. And for that, we have uh, ready built out of the box um, templates, um, which we deliver along with, uh, with our adapters so that the implementation and configuration um, of the platform in terms of uh, bringing up a new integration scenario or new combination of tools is very, very easy and can be done uh, within a few hours or just maybe one, one day or two days. So um, anyway, um, these templates are customizable. For, uh, for our customers if they should not fit into their environment, but usually um, there's so much um, experience uh, from past projects we have, we have built into these templates that usually um, they fit quite good. Here's just, um, before I um, give over to Christian, one last slide here just as a, as an example how complex, of course, tool integration could be. So. Um, this is a customer using these seven, seven tools. And um, you can see that the tools are not only integrated one-to-one, -one, so the connections between the tools, they can, of course, be any to many. And uh, this, we believe, is the, one of the reasons why such a platform like Argus and Symphony makes absolutely sense, because you do not have to care about different integration technologies or plugins or whatever. So it's all based on one single and easy technology and uh, gives, you, gives you a solution for, for all integration needs here. So and uh, in order to prove that um, and to give you a look inside the product, um, I will now hand over to Christian. So I will just have to give control to him. And then he should be able to share his screen with you. Thank you, Ralph. Um, so what I have prepared today, um, basically on, on, on my machine, here's a little demonstration um, of Symfony. We will also go through the basic concepts, the, the setup that is required. Um, if for my demonstration, I have been, um, I'm running an, an uh, Atlas in Jira server, version 8.6. I'm running latest version of Symfony, and I uh, also I'm also connected in the background um, uh, to my to my cloud uh, as, as uh, Azure DevOps um, server. So we have Jira here, Azure here, uh, with Symfony here. Um, just to give you a little bit of an insight of, of the rest of the setup, I'll just jump into the um, the installation page itself. So we see all the components that I applied to the to the to the platform. Um, we have the Azure adapter, with the Jira adapter. 
um, the basic process template that's kind of the best of breed, uh, the best of uh, best of, of, of all the implementations uh, that we've done in the past 10 years. So this is a, this is a best practice uh, kind of um, collection here. And uh, I also installed the, um, the Jira uh, and Azure integration um, in Symfony. That's a ready build, uh, build process um, that we provide along with the platform. Um, so each of the components, um, they do have specific configurations that we call configuration sets. Um, if we if we take a look into the adapters, this is mostly uh, connection related information. So if we just jump to the Azure adapter, I've created a config set called Cloud. Um, in Symfony, you can have as many connections uh, to to um, to uh, to the uh, two systems as you want. So in case I would run uh, various kinds of or, uh, various kinds of, of repositories uh, for Azure, I could just um, hook it uh, with different configuration sets. So if I run also an on-premise version, I can also uh, just create another config set here. And then um, it's mainly usually um, connection-related uh, parameters. So this is just my um, uh, my instance here, my organization here, um, and then in Symfony, I have, I always had do have a way, of course, to verify if the connection works. By the way, um, this kind of of um, of connection tests is is done automatically by Symfony on a regular basis, um, so that if some problems occur in a connection to a tool. You can you can really um, very early identify that and, and and make it part of your your uh, monitoring notification strategy as, as well. Um, same kind of thing for Jira. It's just a local instance that I'm running here. These are the connection uh, parameters, just like where the application is reachable and and basically the credentials. Um, and um, there's nothing much uh, to configure about the process template itself, um, but for the process um, implementation that we have here, there's a couple of um, configuration parameters available. Those are mainly usually for different projects. So yeah, I have created one configuration for a demonstration project. So which in fact then brings together um, which of the uh, Azure connections I want to use, which of the uh, Jira connections I want to use. Um, then uh, we do have uh, the possibility here to, to drop a Jira query string. So this is just identifying which of the, which of the um, issues from Jira are part of the synchronization. Um, there is also alternative implementations where you could just select from a list of predefined queries in, in Jira. There is there's, there's um, hundreds of advantages and disadvantages for for each uh, for each uh, uh, option. Uh, we have the type of item that we will create um, in Azure, and we also do have what we call a mapping scenario. That is a connection to some um, mapping module. Uh, that is basically responsible for uh, the data transformation itself. If we just have a short look into that one, um, you can see these mapping scenarios are reusable. Um, they're also uh, they also um, do have a mechanism of inherit inheritance. So, especially if you're running a large uh, amount of projects uh, with the platform, that's pretty that's pretty nice because you can have a, a basic uh, mapping scenario that clarifies all the standard the default fields, uh, whereas you can have a specific uh, project configuration that just sorts out um, uh, the, the one or two extra fields that, uh, that uh, each project wants, wants to synchronize. Um, the mapping scenario, I have you know, a quite simplistic example here um, with just the title and the description, and then those can be just administrated. So I get a list of, of the attributes on each side, and then I can, I can just um, select whatever I want to want to synchronize here. So um, that's the mapping side of the story. I'll just go back and use the default mapping here. Um, the last remaining aspect um, in the Symfony platform is then the scheduler. It's pretty much like the mapping module organized in, in groups. So with a growing amount of, of synchronization, you're going to have different kind of, of groups available here that helps organize the system a little bit. Um, I don't 
So uh, we have one schedule defined uh, for the demonstration project. The scheduling is pretty much done like uh, like what you might know from uh, from Cron. Um, and there's a little editor here that helps us understand um, the different parameters, so we can set up pretty much every combination on what what day in the week and and when exactly um, the processes uh, are are launched. Um, uh, we do also have a another interface uh, available in Symfony uh, where the synchronization processes can be triggered from outside. That's an alternative way of, of implementing um, the system. Uh, it's usually done like if you, for example, if you're in a position to uh, send um, to send an event uh, message from, let's say, a webhook in Jira. That's alternative implementation to the scheduler. So once this is uh, this is all set up, um, I can basically just run it. So uh, from here, it's for testing purposes, so it just goes through. Um, there's one single object in Jira that has been synchronized now. Let's see for for the details here. I'll just check into the Argo project. Um, so it takes a little bit. On my machine to wake up. Um, it's a little bit more um, while we're waiting for for, uh, for Jira. What we can see, this one single item has already been synchronized. So I just create another one um, on the Jira side, and then we run the process again, expecting that it's going to be exposed to the um, to the Azure balls um, on the other side. So it takes a little bit more time and more time and more time and more time so let me just have a look here no we're there so here's our measurement problem that has been transported and i'll just create another one and say oh we also do have um more than obvious performance issues <laughs> um and then we say jira is quite slow today I create the item. It's becoming part of the uh, of the issues list. I just update that for a second. Hope it doesn't take again too long. Um, so it's um, created. It says and it's loading data. It says and la, while we're waiting, we just go and get the scheduling on the symphony side. Uh, is it finished yet? Let's just be patient. Uh, yeah, okay, it's, it's there. So let's go schedule. Um, and I'm going to run the, uh, the schedule again. So, firing and then um, we should see like the process pretty fast here of course a uh, small amount of data um, what we can also see here is the is is, uh, is uh, the transaction type of, of processing that symphony does so on the first phase of the process execution of the execution of the synchronization what we do is what we call a, a scoping that is identifying all objects to be transferred. That's pretty much in our example here based on, on the query. Um, and then Symfony just walks through each of the objects and synchronizes them. That's then uh, what we call the execution phase. So both um, both objects synchronized. Um, let's check on the um, on the work items here. If I just jump into into the Azure side and update it quickly, we see the performance issue is propagated. Um, in the background, Symfony uses um, uses a module that we call Persistence that is responsible for keeping track of um, the surrogate object creation. So at any point in time, we do know um, uh, from 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 looking from Jira side or Azure side, we do know which objects have been created and how the relationship is. Um, we do also store detailed checksum based information for each, for each attribute, the attachments, for the comments, um, so that the process can be 
as effective as possible in just uh, synchronizing um, the, the really relevant changes. So that's um, that's pretty much uh, the basic setup that we do have in um, that we do have in Symphony. Maybe a last word. Uh, there's also kind of a log mechanism available. This is what we call a reporting module. Um, so and that is taking track of of all the exe all the process executions that uh, that were taking place. Like we see, the last ones were all successful. Here was a problem uh, right before the show. Uh, we are bumped into some some issues because my personal token in Azure was expired. So um, that's how Symphony is then also collect uh, collecting the problems uh, so that you have a clear record um, of what's going on and you can resolve from from those issues. So that's pretty much everything I, I wanted to quickly show you um, um, about about Symphony and the setup. Um, so and I'll, I'll give back uh, I'll give back the control to Ralph. Um, thanks very much for, for watching. Yeah, thanks, uh, Christian. So taking back control. So you should see my slide now. Um, yes, very good. Um, so. We are pretty much at the end of the webinar. So there's just um, a, maybe one or two slides I want to show. But in the meantime, um, I just would like to encourage you to, to ask your, your questions. Don't, don't forget that. Um, so maybe just a few, a few words on additional features we may have not been talking about. So what we... Uh, also can achieve with uh, our sense of an integration platform is that we have uh, of course there are tools where, where where the items may have a certain kind of hierarchy or or relationship between each other also this is possible to be transferred um, between the tools given that both tools have more or less the same kind of functionality incorporated of course um, also so that's clear. Uh, we support attachments or these special comment type um, field types or rich text uh, can be can be transferred between different tools. Um, so this is all, all possible. Then of course, uh, what is very important is what we have seen now in the in the demonstration is that uh, that only one um, synchronization process was running at at at, uh, at one time. Of course, we, we have the option that uh, several processes can be run um, at the same time. And this can also be scaled, of course. And uh, we have seen the, uh, the, the scheduled approach here. So in, in this case, Christian uh, triggered that schedule by hand so that we do not have to wait until the schedule really is, is, is pushing then the process. Um, we have, as Christian also mentioned, um, different approaches. So Jira, for example, is kind of an um, end trigger mechanism. So, for example, if a state for a certain item changes into a specifi specified uh, uh, state, we can then take as an action to run pro a synchronization process directly, for example, or it can be also user controlled um, or manual controlled, like we have seen here in the example. And um, yeah, that Christian has already covered uh, our persistence modules. Uh, so where we are really um, um, recording kinds of data, one is one part is that we are storing uh, the ID pairs, so the, the, the original item with the corresponding surrogate item, so that we always have, of course, a clear understanding which um, of the items in, within the tools are really connected with each other. And also, we are um, we have some kind of a, a stamping mechanism so that we um, that we use checksums so that for subsequent um, synchronizations synchronization runs we do not uh, synchronize data which already has been synchronized and not been changed in the meantime. So this is also very important in terms of performance um, and also load of the whole network, of course. And last but not least, my, my very last slide here. Um, as um, yeah, load and, and load balancing is always a topic in large organizations and uh, in, in, in uh, projects with very high load. Of course, Symphony can also be um, 
we run into kind of a cluster environment. That means we simply add additional Symfony servers um, with a really small configuration. They know of each other and then they can take over load and balance the load. And if one of the uh, nodes, for example, should go down, all the other nodes uh, will take over the complete work and the jobs and uh, perform as uh, nothing would happen. So for the end user or the administrator, um, there will be there will be no change. Maybe a little bit uh, lag in performance if one server is missing, but there's no data lost, no job lost. So everything will be taken over completely automatically. Okay, so I think that's it now. So um, let's see if we have if we have any. Any questions here? Um, so the question is, can you link a single requirement um, from Fidelia or DOS to a block in Enterprise Architect? Um, so this is a very specific question. Um, I'm not sure, Christian, if you want to have a take on that. Sure, Ralph. Um, the um, there's there's usually um, there's usually a, a large set of, of default processes that we um, that we provide along with the Simply platform. Um, however, if if any of the default processes does not exactly meet your expectations in terms of of its behavior, we are always in a position, or also customers are in a position to adjust um, to adjust to that and. Um, if you really want, uh, if you really want to uh, to automate the attachment um, of a requirement to a to a large uh, set of of model elements, yes, that's that's perfectly possible, of course. Okay, very good. So uh, currently, I do not see any any other question. Um, so just one hint for you, um, this webinar is also recorded, uh, so you can uh, review that at any time. Uh, you will receive an email later on um, with, um, with a link to the recording and the presentation, the PowerPoint slides we have shown. Um, if you should have any additional question uh, right after uh, the show here, uh, just do not hesitate to call or email us or um, take get in touch with your um, sales representative if you already uh, have one associated um, so we can we can hopefully answer any remaining question then afterwards so then i would like to thank you for your participation and um, hopefully we will meet uh, each other in one of the next webinars or maybe in person or um, um, yeah maybe through another channel like email or phone or whatever. So thank you very much again and uh, enjoy the rest of the week. Bye-bye.